looking to actually verify that maybe microbial attachment is what we're looking for. So thanks to Dr. Gilcrease for, for helping me with this experiment, and Dan and Cheyenne here had a pretty hands-on help with me setting up these experiments as well. Funding's from Department of Energy, and we collaborated with a couple other schools to get this done. So, thank you. Well, as this is the research group, I don't guess we're going to get any questions from those. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Definitely. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I could probably come up with one. <laughs> oh, yeah, put, put him on this <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, you're going to make me do it. <laughs> oh. um, actually, you, you answered my question. With your last last slide, so that was oh. like, oh darn it! <laughs> yeah. Is there something you can build into your next experiments uh, that would help us uh, determine whether microbial attachment to the cellulose is an important factor or not? Sure. So, going back to that. Um, Going back to here with this microbial attachment, if the enzyme is actually secreted in close, in close proximity with that microbial attachment, you would probably see a higher concentration of the enzyme or higher enzyme activity in a solid. So if you could separate the solids and that liquid effluent, and we were starting to see higher concentrations of the enzymes in the solids, that could indicate that those enzymes were secreted on the solids rather than in that um, liquid effluent. That would be if um, that was the only way they were secreted. That could be one potential way. Okay, I mean that would involve uh, enzyme quantification assays, which can't be done, but uh, they're somewhat tedious. Yeah. Um, what would tell you for sure that you have uh, microbes attached to the cellulose? You could. I don't know how quantitative it would be, but if you took um, a solid, maybe a piece of cellulose, underneath the microscope and actually saw a hydrolyzing microbe attached to that piece, you could say there was attachment. So, what are, what are you going to do if, if you come up with this and you say, oh yeah, increased agitation speed is good, but unfortunately we lose all this high profit stuff? What are you going to hide? Uh... Sure. So, <laughs> if, if, are you with? <laughs> so, and that was kind of built into. These are just the precursors. We actually have to send them somewhere downstream yeah. and figure out what the most. So it kind of gets into the economic aspect of it. Um, say, you know, butyric has a specific use. Butyric acid, we're getting way more butyric acid than caproic acid, even though caproic acid you know, looks prettier. It's used for jet fuel. Um, then we have to balance selling both. I don't know if that's what you're getting at. Yeah, OK. okay. But I don't want to say. Well, it, it is outside of this scope. We're more looking at cobalt fatty acid, but it would be another path of research from this. Was that an expected result? Did, did you expect to see that? The specifically the the longer chains or the yeah. Um. So, I would uh, short answer is no. There is some. There's a. I'm gonna. I'm not kicking the can down the road, but Cheyenne actually talked about this earlier. There are other syntropes, so I talked about that degradation syntrope, breaking that apart. Um, there's another syntrope that actually helps, or could potentially help, um, create longer chains. I'm not well versed in talking about that, but um, okay. so if you could optimize that with agitation, then you could, yeah, potentially um, use agitation to make specifically longer chains. I don't have any more. Hey, let you off the hook. Huh? Yeah. <laughs>